Hi, my name is Michelle Watiti and I'm a mental health advocate for the youth in Kenya. And as well, I'm a person living with bipolar. I have, was diagnosed with bipolar when I was 19 and although it's something that I'm always going to have and it's never going to leave me, it's something that doesn't define who I am. I'm a daughter before I'm bipolar. I'm a sister before I'm bipolar. I'm a girlfriend sometimes before I'm bipolar. Bipolar is something that I have, not something that has me. Michelle on a good day is very social um, and in a very like happy mood. I'm generally not usually a very unhappy person. I like talking to people, so I text my friends on a good day and I like to do things for myself. So I like to, um, maybe I'll do my nails or I'll give myself a pedicure or, you know, do makeup and just sit in the house just for the sake of it. I'm not great at it, but it's fun. <laughs> Michelle on a good day is a really jovial person. Yeah, um, I'm currently studying media in Desta. I was diagnosed with bipolar at the beginning of last year when I was 19. I don't know exactly how I would describe how that situation felt, the diagnosis and everything. Previously though, um, before I got diagnosed with bipolar, I'd actually been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder and clinical depression. Uh, so I was on medication for that for like a year. I saw very many doctors, um, but it, I don't know, it felt like it wasn't helping. So I remember actually for a while I'd actually kind of quit, like I'd given up on therapy and medicine. I was like, maybe it's just not for me. Um, but I started feeling really, really low again and just like there was a lot that was going on in my mind. And I think quarantine really brought out the worst <laughs> of my mental health issues. The isolation, the lack of distraction, the fact that you're just home constantly, you know, repeating the same schedule every day. It was really, really hard to deal with. And uh, it got to a point where I was just like, I don't think I can handle this on my own anymore. I don't think I'm supposed to feel like this, like normal people don't feel like this. Um, when I first got diagnosed, my family's reaction was, I mean, my mom was really sad for me. Not really in a, you know, she's scared of the disease way more that she was scared of the ways that it was making my life hard um and then also i think bipolar is a really big word in the mental health community because we tend to speak mostly about anxiety and depression especially in the kenyan and african setting and so when you tell people that you have bipolar of course the first reaction is kind of like bipolar okay what is that about you know especially with like in the media when you look at the media people with bipolar are always kind of like the crazy ones or the ones who have ex you never know what to expect from them um my father he was honestly really relaxed and i'm really glad i think he was he was the rock that we all kind of needed at that moment because of course it was a really big blow because now this is a whole other like financial aspect again for a family that we had to factor in my medication and um all these other things and insurance and just so many things to factor in that we hadn't thought about before um, including how this affects my little sisters of course so I think we worked through it as a family they were really supportive it was mostly about me how can they make this easier on me how can they you know help me cope with this situation better and I'm really really grateful for that rather than them having ostracized me or not believed me or you know gaslighted me I'm really really appreciative of my family from mental health stigma, I think we've made some progress, definitely. More people are talking about it. There's more accommodations being made. There's celebrities even starting entire campaigns um, for mental health awareness. Uh, would I say that I feel like we're where we need to be? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because again, um, we still don't really have compassion for people who have the scarier mental illnesses. You know, we all know about depression. And we all know about anxiety and maybe you know a little bit about bipolar but i think we still are in that stage where if somebody tells you they have schizophrenia or they have you know borderline personality disorder or dissociative identity disorder the one thing that you're going to be thinking is oh okay like, wow are they crazy or something even worse you know like you expect the worst from them and it's help it's aiding people to like deny people jobs and whatnot and I think that's really unfair you know just because that people have mental health issues doesn't mean they're any less worthy or any less contributing to society 
if I was to say one thing to people who don't have mental health illnesses is that we're just like you. We, there's no, nothing different, you know? The only difference is our brain chemicals sometimes work a little bit different and that makes life harder on us. But it doesn't mean that we're going to purposefully use it as an excuse to be lazy or to be angry or to be violent. Trust us, give us the benefit of the doubt because I think we all give them, somebody else, you know, the benefit of the doubt. So my mother actually found me another doctor um, at Nairobi Hospital in the clinical, the psychology clinic. Um, and when we went there, within maybe five minutes of talking to me, she was like, I'm so sure what you have is bipolar. That doesn't sound like anxiety or depression. And the reason why the last year was so hard on me and why it felt like I wasn't making any progress because I was on the wrong meds, first of all. And sorry, I was on the wrong meds and I wasn't on any therapy, which apparently is cognitive behavioral therapy is really important when you're bipolar because the medicine doesn't work on its own. You also have to learn coping mechanisms so that you don't have to rely on medication forever. Uh, that meeting, I think, was one of the hardest that I have had since I started the whole mental health journey. I felt really, I don't know, I think also because of the way that our society set up, bipolar felt like so serious of a thing for me, so I was really scared. Um, it didn't, I don't know, it just, it felt very overwhelming. Um, but either way, I was really happy to have a diagnosis and I was put on medication almost right away. And she suggested a therapy center for me to go to, so that's what I've been doing. Those are my coping mechanisms that I've been working with. Um, my biggest challenge, I think, would be access to mental health. Mental health is really expensive. The services are really expensive. Seeing the doctor and medication and everything, and I'm privileged and lucky enough to be able to be on health insurance, which pretty much covers for everything, so I don't really have to pay out of pocket, because that would actually be an impossible reality for my family financially. Um, I definitely think there needs to be something done about mental health services in this country. They're very disappointing, but I'm very, very happy that I'm finally, it feels like I'm on the right track, finally. Like if I'm doing therapy, I've been doing it for a couple months. Um, I'm feeling a lot better. I've been on meds for a couple months as well. I feel like I've grown from where I was last year mentally, and I'm more capable of dealing with um, bad days, I think, better than I was last year as well. I have bipolar type one, um, so it's the, I don't wanna say milder version of bipolar, cause it's not mild at all, but it's, mm, it's not as much, you know how you think about bipolar and you think about extreme mood swings, like constant changing like that. It's not quite like that for me. I think I fluctuate more between um, super anxious and depressed periods to super manic periods. Those are kind of the two extremes of bipolar. You're either depressed or you're manic. When I'm depressed, um, I can get really depressed, of course, without getting into too much detail. It's just a very sad time and I am physically unable to do anything, participate in the life going on around me. And when I'm manic, it, you feel almost like you're high, like you're really excited and you just wanna make all these terrible decisions that don't really make sense, but in that moment, it really feels like that's what you need to do to make yourself happy and usually feel really tired out and it's like zaps all your energy and almost immediately after a manic episode you always have to go through a depressive episode um, but those of course with medicine and everything have been a little bit easier to manage so i'm very very thankful for that after diagnosis um I think I did even more research on now my particular, now that I had a diagnosis, it felt like, okay, now I have a sort of jumping jack, like a jumping board, basically, for where to go from here. Um, I watched a lot of videos for people who are living with bipolar disorder and borderline personality disorder because they have a lot of intercrossing symptoms, um, how they were dealing with it, how they first approached the parents, how, you know, they cope with it on a day-to-day, -day, even without medication or, um, anything else um, and then I realized that I don't think I could do it on my own and that's what helped me realize that I don't think I'm one of those people because there's people who deal with of course not all mental illnesses because if it's a chemical imbalance that you're definitely going to need medication but depression or anxiety or something there's people who do breath work for example or yoga or exercise and it helps and I I tried all these things and it felt like it wasn't really helping for me and I didn't understand why 
And so when I finally talked to my psychiatrist um, and she was telling me about cognitive behavioral therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy is more about changing your behaviors. It's about learning new coping mechanisms and it's extremely important when you have mental health issues because it's, it's about looking into the future. 10 years from now, five years from now, without this doctor, without this therapist, or without this medication, will you be able to face a bad day without, you know, succumbing to it? Um, so cognitive behavioral therapy kind of helps me make sure that at every point in my day, I'm able to control myself and get through that particular situation without harming either myself um, mentally or, you know, being switched like having a severe mood switch because sometimes that can happen and when it happens i need to know how to be able to calm down finish what i'm doing and then deal with the symptoms after i get home my doctor helps me keep myself accountable as well that's how therapy helps me it helps me keep accountable whether i was actually behaving the way that i want to be behaving this week whether i was letting my mental health be an excuse for me either not doing work or being rude to people so i think for, I would literally suggest it for anyone and everyone. It really, really revolutionizes the way you think about your day-to-day -day life. Yeah. In terms of how it affects like what I want to do, my dreams, and what I want to do in the future, I think now I'm a bit more positive that it's not going to be such a huge factor in my life in terms of work and everything because there's times where I have to take breaks from school because of mental health issues. And I was thinking about in the long term, you know, that's really not sustainable to be employable if you constantly need to be taking breaks and everything. But with the help of my doctors and my medicine, I'm really excited to hopefully be working on radio, <laughs> in radio in the future, presenting a couple of shows um, and working with NGOs for human rights, for marginalized people and especially youth. Um, poor youth and people who don't have access to sanitation and healthcare, those are really my passions. Yeah, I'm really, 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 I think, excited for the next part of my life. <laughs>